G'day guys, welcome back. <laughs> Just had to put my gloves on before I could wave at you. How are you all doing? I have a day off work today, so yay, let's paint. And I'm gonna play around with the Americana Decor Satin Enamel Paints again today. Just put a base coat down on a previously used canvas. I'm gonna use some of my old canvases up again so I don't keep pouring on new ones. Uh, so, if you saw my last cloud pour, you know that I just used Floetrol and paint. So, there's the Floetrol, and I've got Liquitex Basics, and I've mixed that two parts Floetrol to one part Liquitex Basics, and then I did have to add um, just a splash of water as well to get them to be a nice little pouring consistency. There is a little mound. It's... A little bit thinner than what I would use for my flip cup pours but it still gets a mound so those are the colors with the white here I've used artist loft flow acrylic and I've put in a quarter actually it's probably more of a third of the satin enamels so um, 60 grams what did I do I did 60 grams of this 20 grams of that and 80 grams of Floetrol so and they're mixed one to one Floetrol one part Floetrol one part of the white okay let's get to it um, I've got just sort of pinks and or well, purples and blues today I still can't decide how many layers I want to do I thought I thought I'd do two but then it gets more um, sort of blended but if you do one, then you can't see as many rings of different colours in the centre. Oh, look, I'm just going to go two. I probably need about three quarters of that cup. This is a um, 40 by 50 centimetre. Start with a good amount of blue. Shall I use half my blue? I'll do two, two layers. So I'll use half my blue and some white. Half my purple. Half my blue. I'll tell you what the colours are in a minute. I don't want to use too much of this pink because it can really take over. And then I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the white again. Actually, I might pull the white in from up high afterwards. I'll just keep layering blue. Purple. Well, this is way too much paint, you guys. I didn't want to use all of it. I'll leave that pink out. I might have to do two pours. No. I'm just going to have to tip some of it out, really. But way too much. And then the white, I'm just going to go from up high. Just in the middle like that. I'm hoping that's enough white. Let's move these paints out of the way. My base coat doesn't have any of the satin enamel in it. I just used the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic with the Flow Troll. Didn't have any white um, satin enamel in that base coat. Couldn't see the point really. It's just there to help the paint slide around. Okay, my colours are Dioxazine Purple. And the next purple is Deep Violet. And then we've got the dark blue, which is thalo blue. And the light blue is called light blue permanent. And then we've got this pretty pink, which is medium magenta. So there we go. Those are the colours. Oh, look, I've got a little cloud on top. Now, oh, this is way too much paint, you guys. Probably need to do a bigger canvas. Oh, what to do, what to do. Could quickly change canvases couldn't I because this is a lot of paint um, I might have to do that okay guys I've changed the canvas off that white paint 
gone up to the next size. This is a 50 by 50 centimetre or 20 by 20 inch. I just scraped all the white base coat off the other one, added it to this one, and let's do this. I've still got way too much paint. I know that because I only wanted three quarters of a cup of this and now I've got a full cup, so we're going to have trouble pouring it. Here we go. I'm hoping I've got enough white in there. Because I only put a little bit in the bottom and then I put some more just straight through the centre, so I'm hoping that that's enough. I, still, I can see quite a lot of white in there, so that's good. I just didn't want it to be too pale, you know, it would just look too pink. If I had too much white in it, and I didn't want it to be too pink, I wanted a little hint of pink, but a lot of blue still in it. Alright, well that's looking good so far. Now, where's my torch? Let's give it a bit of a torch to pop some bubbles, because that came out real fast, didn't it? You can see little cells popping up already as I'm torching, and bubbles are popping. And it's making little pink, I guess they're cells, little pink bubbles. is that? That might be, I think that's this one. This one is a semi-transparent, that's the medium magenta. I didn't use a lot of that because I didn't want it to take over, as I said, I didn't want it to look too pink. The others are all, all um, opaques. I think I checked them earlier and they were all opaques except for that one medium magenta. That's interesting, I'm putting the cells in the medium magenta. Righto. Now I'm going to do this the same as I did the other pores. I'm going to go to each corner first and stretch the paint. And then I'll come back and cover the corners. So I really want to move it around a lot. The base coat's not very slippery, is it? The paint's rolling over itself, which is what I didn't want it to do. Never mind. We don't have enough paint. See how the paint's rolling over itself instead of just sliding across. Mm, I've got a little bit more white here. I'm gonna. This is the leftover white with the satin enamel in it. I'm just gonna add a splash of water to thin it a little bit, and then I'm gonna pour it around the outside just to see if I can get this paint to flow a little bit better. If you're going to use a base coat, you really do need to make it a base coat. You need to have a lot of paint on there, otherwise your paint's really not going to move any better. Because it's there for the top layer to slide around on top of, so that the paint doesn't roll over itself so much. Which means you can keep your rings. Now, there's my little tool. I'm just going to use this little tool just to spread the paint a little bit. I don't know if this is going to make any difference at all, but in my mind, it makes sense that the base coat be a little bit, um, not thicker in consistency, but thicker in the amount of paint that you're using, just so that the top layer can float around on it. No harm done if it doesn't, it's just going to all pour off over the edge. Okay, that'll do. Have I got any more to put on this last little corner? Not really. Yes, I'm contaminating my white. I don't think it's going to matter, it's all going to tip over the edge. Okay, let's go again. See if it makes any difference. Yeah, if you're watching that dark purple on the edge there, um, it had rolled over the purple, but now it's purple's actually flowing to the edge. I've lost a little bit of it, but I probably should have started that earlier. Okay, so now I'll go back to the middle. 
As I said, I want to do each corner, stretch the paint, and then I'll go to each corner again and flip the paint over the edge. Now you can see there, see how that purple's flowing nicely? It's actually moving and going towards the edge, I'm not losing my purple. the opposite corner not a lot of cloudy effects just yet I was hoping that that white in the bottom would create more of a cloudy effect in the center there but then I didn't put a lot in did I I didn't want too much last time I did this pour I had way too much white in the center and I thought I'm not going to do that again so I put less in and now I'm complaining that I don't have enough. You can't win. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to stretch it over the edge there. Let it go over the corner. Because it's the stretching of the paint that um, helps create these effects. And the paint rubs onto other paint and stretches over other paint. It's when you get those pretty cloud effects in your cells. And while I've got it aiming that way, I'll do this so it's pouring towards you, tilting towards you, I should say. I don't really want to lose all my, my blue. It's going to pop a little bit of blue there. As I said, I don't want it to really be a pink pour. I want it to have more blue in it. So let's just put some blue on that corner and call it done on that side. Now I need to get the weight of the paint back to the centre again. So off we go. So my colours have blended quite a lot. This is what I was hoping I would not achieve, all this blending, but what can you do? I did add a splash of water to these paints, so it may have just been a little bit too thin, or thinner than my last ones were. should have maybe kept a little bit of white negative space here and there on the edge because it looks quite pretty doesn't it but no can't just have a tiny little blob like that you're gonna have to go I'm sorry just going to recenter my paints and then go off to that last corner and while the weight of it's down here I'll just bring it back to the middle and then shoot that extra little bit of white off as well so take the weight to where you want it to go and over Now I'm just going to play with the composition. So I don't want to keep tilting and tilting because you'll lose your shape of your clouds in the middle if you keep tilting. So try to do each corner first, go over the corners again and then that should be it. Um, best not to just keep going because as I said you're just going to overstretch everything. Okay, now I'm going to give it a torch, check my edges. By looking at this, it does look as if I've made my paints a bit thinner than I did for my last pour. Um, my rings have blended a little bit more into each other. It's still pretty. 
pretty. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess I had no idea what I was going to achieve. Um, I do like how the white center is not as um, like blobby. Um, this was the last one I did. You can see the difference in that white center. See how it's just like a big white blob? I didn't want that again. So it, I did actually I did achieve that in this by not putting as much white in in the bottom. So that's good. At least I achieved something that I was going for. Uh, now I'll let it sit for a bit. I'm just going to play with my my edges because I've got some edges here that aren't covered. So I'm going to pop a little bit of paint on those and then I will pause the video and come back in about half an hour and see if anything's changed. So I'll, I'll, pa I'll pause it now and then I'll just finish my, my corners where I've missed and uh, then I'll see you in about half an hour. Okay, guys, I've only left it for about 15 minutes or so. It's reacted a little bit more and I made up some more paint. I had a little bit of leftover paint from this pour. So while this was waiting, I just finished off my Liquitex Basics paints, cut them open, scraped out the paint, made up a little bit more and I'll pour on that other canvas that I, I was going to do initially. But before I do that, let's have a look at this little beauty. Look at those gorgeous little cloudy cells there. It's a very interesting centre. As I said, not as blobby as the last one, so I'm happy about that. My rings have gone a little bit blurred, a little bit combined. So that's, I think I just add a little bit too much water when I made up my paint. So my next batch I've made, I put less water in, just a tiny little squirt of water. Look at these little cuties down here. Hey little guys, you're very cute. Yes you are. That was probably, you know how I added some extra base coat that had the um, satin enamel in it? On the edge so there's those and there's those so that's probably from the satin enamel paint that's popped up how I added that extra bit okay so there it is really pretty really happy with that one didn't end up being too pink as I had thought it might so yeah pretty pretty I'll um, just go and mix up a little bit more white base coat and I will be back with the next one Bye for now.